Hey everyone, thanks for joining. We're gonna get started in just a few minutes just to let everybody on that wants to be on. While we wait here and while I've got some people on, where's everybody from? Let me know in the chat box. I am from Denver, Colorado. There might be a prize involved. Houston, ooh, Germany, Spain, Romania, Virginia, Europe. Jersey <laughs> with an exclamation point. Love it. New York. Texas, all right, since uh, Chu was the first one to respond, I'm gonna send you a data availopoly. I'll reach out to you personally to get some information from you. You get prizes when you join early. All right, I think we're tapering off here. So I think let's get started. Hey everyone, thanks for joining DataVail's webinar today in partnership with New York Oracle Users Group. Oracle Practice Team Manager, Zane Wharton, will be your speaker today and will be covering the real value of Oracle Health Checks. Before we get started, I just have a few housekeeping items. Please submit any questions at the bottom panel of your screen in the Q&A section, and Zane will do his best to cover them at the end of today's session, time permitting. We're also recording today's session and we'll be sending out a replay of the webinar as soon as it's available. You'll also be able to access links to Oracle resources in the chat section that I'll be adding once we get started. That's all for me, Zane, let's go. Thanks, Jenna. Hey, I'm Zane. I'm gonna talk about the real value of Oracle Help Checks. Uh, this is for the uh, New York Oracle Users Group, and a special thank you for NYOG UG for their event promotions. Uh, we've also got other upcoming webinars that will be going on, so please keep an eye on your their website, our website, and take a look at it to your schedule. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with uh, New York Oracle Users Group, welcome. There will be some additional information out there on how to connect uh, later in the presentation uh, with them at the end of the web webinar. Uh, I am Zane Wharton. I have about 20 years of Oracle DBA experience. I've been involved with multiple roles and industries. I'm OCP certified. I have a master's in information systems and uh, I lead uh, part of the Oracle team that uh, where we uh, uh, deliver Oracle services to uh, many dozens of clients. Uh, Datavail is been a database services for over 13 years. They started out primarily supporting Oracle and SQL Server. They were formed by database administrators. Uh, we had other, other new technologies like Mongo, Postgres, uh, and we've expanded quite a lot in the last uh, 15 years or 13 years. Greg, you just stopped by. Do we have a booth? I assume we have a booth. Um, okay. 
Jenna, you were going to mention about our survey? Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Zane. It wouldn't be a DataVail webinar without a giveaway. DataVail is trying to learn more about organizations, cloud adoptions, and usage for different workloads. And as part of this, we'd like you to take part in a cloud adoption survey that we've launched through Tech Validate, an independent surveyor. Please use the link in the slide to complete. I'll also add this to our chat function shortly so you have access and we'll be selecting a winner from today's webinar to win a work from home package that includes a data veilopoly, a data veilopoly, or data veil mask, noise canceling headphones, a hoodie, a insulated cup, and a Sherpa blanket. Make sure you uh, get it filled out today so that we have your answers. Thanks, Zane, back to you. Thanks. Okay, our agenda for today, I'm gonna to start out with some bad advice as I usually do. And uh, we'll talk about when health checks aren't performed, why they might be important, uh, what should be in a health check, uh, some other best practices. And I'll go through kind of some examples of what we provide and, and how to, uh, a little bit on how we gather that data. And then some final thoughts. So first of all, some bad advice, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, everyone has heard this. Um, a lot of times uh, they're wrong. Sometimes it is broker. Sometimes it could always use a little bit of work. Uh, you might be too busy. You know who set it up and they do great work. And if you don't get any complaints, how can you have any problems? And if you're not getting any alerts, it means no problems. All those things could indicate some kind of a miss. Uh, so what happens when health checks aren't prefer uh, performed. Hidden issues could lead to database crashes or long delays in dashboard updates. Um, Socrates said that the unexamined life is not worth living. And I say the unexamined, unexamined database can lead to trouble. Um, might have difficulty logging in, security in intrusions that you don't notice. Um, you might not get complaints from database users, which might indicate that uh, they, a lot of times they'll they'll be doing some sort of strange repeat, re, you know, strange behavior where they're clicking twice on different buttons or doing some other kind of strange activity uh, to avoid a problem in the database. And sometimes talking to your users can help you uh, find those issues and track them down. Uh, and uh, you never know, you know, if you're using some features you shouldn't be using or you're not. Uh, your backups aren't quite as uh, in, in line, you might be hit with a fine for a failure to comply. Uh, and if you lose any data, of course, that's always loss of time to either recover it or recreate it, or sometimes it's not even recoverable. All this uh, can lead you to some sort of a DBA hell and you don't want to be there. Um, organizational change is constant and your priorities are often fluid. Uh, there's a lot of things that you need to keep track of in your world, just like everybody, project work world, reorgs, loss of staff, uh, you're firefighting from one problem to the other, budget issues, all these things can get in, way, in the way of uh, performing um, regular health checks. Uh, and any, any complicated system, even if it's um, on RDS or anything, uh, requires maintenance to ensure good performance. You want to be proactive as much as you can and not as reactive. Um, should be so health check should be your first step in database planning. It gives you a nice baseline to work with where you can go back to your health check document and look at it and see, hey, how was this set up before? Or are there any issues um, you know, there that showed up in the health check? It helps you plan. Uh, if you're, it's an excellent um, place to just refer to. It's like, oh, where are we storing backups or something? You might live in a complex environment with multiple, you know, many multiple systems or multiple database varieties. Sometimes it's hard to keep track and having sort of health tech documentation can really help. Uh, diagnostic tools and vendors are available to help you with these things. Uh, AWR, Stats Pack, if you don't have the licensing for AWR, uh, AWR, for those you might not know, is Oracle's uh, automate, automated workload repository. You can run reports off that uh, that help uh, that you can look at. We'll be looking through a couple of those, help you uh, get you know fill out the content for your health check. Um, recently, Oracle has renamed their um, sort of check software again. 
It's now called the Autonomous Health Framework. Uh, I knew it mostly as DBCheck from years ago, but there's Oracle's doc ID if you want to look up more details about that. Uh, later on, we'll be also glancing at one of those to show what kind of information it has. What should it include? Uh, Oh, a health check. If you are kind of outsourcing this to help you with your health checks, uh, make sure that you're using one with a strong track record. They're going to have access to all your data. It's pretty much impossible to do the health check without looking at the system as a whole. Uh, at Dataville, we do custom. We have a custom assessment developed by our, by our team uh, where we do major annual health checks uh, for our own folks that we support and for others. Uh, by weekly mini checks. And uh, you want to make sure it's a comprehensive check of both your OS and database system. Uh, some of the things we check, uh, is there a supported version of Oracle? Has it been patched? Uh, you know, what's the current patch level? You want to make sure you get that written down in there. Uh, make sure an SP file's in use. Uh, SP files allow you to make changes on the fly in an Oracle database instance. Um, some of those changes take effect immediately. Other changes need a bounce. But either way, uh, it's nice to be able to write those changes to that SP file. So when it does bounce, it picks up those changes right away. Um, and you'd be surprised to find how many systems think they're using SP files and they're not. That's one of the things we check. You want to make sure you're using your spatialization, how you expect to be using it. Check your file system, whether or not it's regular or ASM. Uh, check your table space critical and warning thresholds. You want to kind of have a snapshot on time of your size utilization so you can, it'll help you do analysis later on. Want to check your memory sizes, make sure those are recorded. Sometimes systems are completely wiped out. You want to restore them for backups, but you know, you don't have that. Uh, well, how is that system actually set up, uh, you know, a year ago or whatever? It's nice to have the health checks to figure that out. Uh, object size, just your largest objects, things like that. Uh, make sure you understand what's in your database and a health check can help you understand that. Uh, you also want to check, check backups. They should be easy to find. Uh, they should be on a different mount point or drive than other different systems. Uh, we get calls from people who say, hey, my database is down. We need help. It's like, oh, where are your backups? So it was in the saved drive that broke. You don't want to be that person. Uh, Backups should also be removed to a tape system or a virtual tape library so that they are stored offsite in case of a full disaster. And make sure that there's some sort of rotation going on. So things are going on site, but still maybe older ones are still there to recover from, but you don't want everything in the same place. Uh, I know that OCI and other instances or AWS have um, S3 sort of uh, um, remote NFS mount points or bucket storage you can use for backups. Uh, that's a great solution if you don't want to work with a uh, tape library company. Uh, use RMAN or another industry standard tool. RMAN was a little dicey in the beginning, uh, but you know that was 20 years ago. Everything's hunky-dory now. RMAN's an excellent tool to use to, and manage your backups. Uh, your, your restore feature should be tested regularly and you should know how it works. That should be documented. It can be in health check, uh, but it should be documented nonetheless. And that you got to make sure your backups are per your DR standards. So whatever you tell your customers, your clients that, hey, we're keeping backup for two weeks or one backup every six months or whatever, whatever your backup things, just your, your backup uh, settings are, make sure that they actually agree with what you say they are. Um, make sure you're, so for the file system, make sure you have adequate space for database growth that uh, generally for using flat file systems that they're 20% larger to allow for um, space growth in, a near in the near term and that the OS is installed on its own drive and mount point. It's not sharing files. Um, that keeps your database from interfer interfering with your OS and your OS interfering from your database. And if your backups are in a different mount point, pretty much you want everything as isolated as you can from each other, just to, so that we all play in our safe spaces uh, without interference. Uh, you want to go through and check performance issues and make sure they're part of there. You want to check redo logs, duplicate SQL issues, stats gathering, invalid objects. Uh, it's a good idea to include some performance information, like uh, take a look at your weight tables, see if there's anything funny in there. Um, 
your alert log trace files, at least partial contents of those, you should scan those for errors. Sometimes you're alarming set up in a way that you're not going to uh, catch some unique verbiage or terminology, or maybe your alarms aren't set up right. So having a periodic check uh, of your entire system is going to help you kind of root out those errors so they don't cause problems later. Uh, you should look over your jobs on DBMS jobs and also your scheduler jobs to see if those are causing issues or maybe taking longer than you expect them to. Sort of mapping out what's there is uh, really important as part of a health check process. Uh, security issues. Uh, maybe your users' uh, accounts are assigned to the wrong kind of table spaces. You want to make sure that they are where you expect them to be, that you don't have folks uh, assigned to the system or sysox table space where they should be in users or have their own independent one table space. Um, you want to check through the user accounts. Do they have privileges that are properly assigned? Or they have, does everybody have DBA privileges? That's usually a, uh, often a shortcut to make sure users can do just certain things. Uh, so they will, you tend to over uh, assign privileges occasionally. You wanna to try to avoid that. Uh, and also dormant accounts. So accounts that haven't been logged into for a year. Maybe that's passwords written on some sticky note somewhere in some office. Uh, you want to make sure those are locked down or removed. Uh, and certainly you want to know they're there. That's not something an alarming system is ever going to find. It's not something a user is ever going to find just sitting out there on its own. Uh, you want to check failed logins. Maybe they're not meeting your threshold or maybe you don't have a threshold for your failed login uh, alerts. You want to check to see are those going on. Take a look at your listener log and such to see if there's anything in there unexpected. Um, so best practice recommendations. You should consolidate your, I mean, it's nice enough to look through everything, go through a checklist and stuff, but it's best to consolidate these into reports and interpret that data for clear recommendations. You wanna have a nice summary. You wanna have um, a, um, you wanna summarize that data in a way you can read it and you know have you know easily English written um, grammar and stuff so that you want to make sure that people can understand, uh, you know, if a non-DBA were to read your report, they should be able to read the report and have some basic understanding of it in case you aren't the one that's going to be there to uh, deal with an issue, you're on vacation or something. Uh, these should be a sn snapshot in time, include uh, as many configuration settings as you can, your performance snapshot and your current size. Uh, so for frequency, uh, for high stress, high turnover, agile environments, you might be doing these monthly, might be doing these quarterly from sort of the normal growing user base, growing data, but not anything crazy. And uh, semi-annually for non-growing steady, uh, you know, if you've got some older systems that are stuck on 11G or something like that, you might not do that. So we're going to talk about some examples. Let me uh, change what I'm sharing. Sorry for the delay. OK, so here's an example of, I hope everybody can see that. Uh, this is an example of what we do. This is sort of like a, I pulled out all the comforting information I could find. And this is basically the write-up of kind of a normal instance. Uh, we're going to have, um, you know, you want to, you know, say out there straight up that, you know, this is an assessment report. So I mean, this was looked at, you had the file's name correctly. There's a date on the file name, stuff like that. Uh, what server it's running on at the time, the date and who did it. You want to go through here. We've got quite a lot of pages. Uh, starts over the summary. So for this particular instance, um, everything was looking pretty healthy. Um, but there, I had some concerns with uh, configuration, patching, backups, and security. Uh, and then at the top of it, we go through all the different recommendations for all the different settings and make comments about each one. So in this case, and the way this report overall is generated is we have a set of scripts we run. It creates a bunch of JSON files. We feed that into a, another database. 
and then spit out this Word doc. Uh, and then we go back and we edit this later on. I mean, it's it's fine to have an automated process, but you need to add to it to make sure that you know what you're saying it makes sense. So we go back through and we add other data to this document to uh, make sure it works. And stuff like the backup history and stuff like that, you're not going to necessarily uh, ever be able to automate that piece of it. Um, so anyway, it it goes through and talks about patching first. It says, hey, this database uh, you know, last had a release update from 2019. This was a 2020 report. So this uh, patch was a uh, little, little behind. So we recommend to do the patch. It looks like the recent stats runs. And it says, hey, these were stopped or failed for some reason. You want to check to see what tables might be missing stats or what's wrong with this process. Uh, you might adjust the windows associated or create tickets to do so. Or maybe you don't do any of that. You just uh, record this here and, and recognize that uh, it might be something to keep an eye on later on. Uh, we go through and look at all the schemas. This notes the amount of invalid objects out there. Uh, those you can attempt to recompile these. Uh, if you notice in this one, there's lots that have the same views that are in invalid. Uh, it might be because you know a major object behind the scenes has changed and affected views across multiple schemas. Uh, again, you may or may not have alarming associated with valid objects. Usually, there's a ton around, uh, so um, knowing that they're there you, you, um, is useful for tracking down perhaps future issues or changes. Uh, here are all the different users that has the have the DBA role. That's not usually appropriate. Uh, this is called out. Um, sometimes, you know, there are reasons behind it, mostly usually because folks are too lazy to narrow down on the particular views, or maybe they actually are doing some kind of function that requires DBA role. Probably not, probably can be cleaned up, but at least you want it documented here. Um, file system mount information. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, if they do have less space than the maximum amount of auto extend that you're sort of aware of that, that you might have to move files around. You might go through and adjust your auto extending values so that you're not gonna over allocate anything. Uh, so a lot of this stuff is just things to be aware of. Uh, if this particular database has, is not using OMF and had duplicate data file names. Uh, that might become to an issue if you're consolidating disk drives and you're moving around data files. Um, you might find that, oh, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Uh, or you might overwrite your file name unintentionally and corrupt your data or just you know lose sections of your tables and that's not good. Uh, these are all the different operations that no logging. This database uh, was using sort of an ad hoc version of uh, DataGuard. Well, so if you're doing no logging operations and those operations are not being passed through the redo logs and you want to make sure that you're aware of that, that they wouldn't have to be rebuilt if you failed over to your failover system. Uh, we also check for duplicate SQL. So uh, basically these are SQL statements that are very similar to each other, uh, but you know, so whatever program is behind them, was it using bind variables and uh, would often, uh, and maybe, so maybe these are SQLs that are a good case for bind variables that might lower the parse rate uh, associated with, you know, can affect your performance. If you're constantly parsing SQL, that's all unique. Maybe that's a bad idea. Just kind of depends. Uh, memory configuration, basically it's like the current status of how much free memory we have on the box. Is it over allocated or under allocated? Uh, just helps you be aware. It has the DB cache advice and I'll show you where I get this table from in a little bit. Uh, basically, this is Oracle's advice on what would happen if you doubled the size of the SGA or the, in this case, the DB cache. Um, how much performance would you improve or is there an opportunity to cut back space? I take all these reports with a grain of salt because uh, Oracle will eat all your memory if you let it. You just have to, um, you know, try, you know, experiment. Uh, if you do reset these settings, you can run your tests and see if it actually is doing the improvement you expected and go back. Uh, some environments are more permissive about that up and others just kind of depends. Uh, then we look for common parameters that are changed or that uh, might be set better uh, or have more beneficial settings. For instance, in this case, it's uh, file system IO options. 
that's something that we tend to look at a ball instances to see if uh, that's set, if it's appropriate. Uh, we have a whole list here, but this was the only one that sort of showed up in this particular instance. Uh, then I delve into performance data. So this database had, was using stats back to, um, or didn't have AWR licensing. So I ran a number of stats pack reports over a number of weeks and just kind of looked at the uh, DB time, looked at many of the reports, uh, sort of had an automated tool to, to run through stats pack reports. Uh, and then kind of looked over typically the top weights, uh, you know, in each of these reports, they're going to have the top five, top, top five timed events. You can go in and look and see what they are. And uh, I put an example of that in here. So, you know, if you um, are using this as a reference point for the far future, you go back, well, what are my normal weights? And if suddenly you notice that, hey, I'm used to be getting average weight of four milliseconds for writes to temp or DB file reads are pretty slow. Uh, this gives you a point of reference to compare later. So maybe your your storage, uh, there's an issue with your storage subsystem that you're not aware of. Um, and you know, you're getting 11 millisecond waits, your this top five time event switches all around. Your health check gives you a chance to look back at something like this and say, oh, this is uh, uh, this is how it should perform or how it performed at one point. You can also do this kind of thing for baseline AWR reports, that sort of thing. Um, but um, you know, this is a system that didn't have uh, the performance and tuning license, so we were unable to do that here. Uh, I also tend to record the top SQL. This is just organized by various uh, different uh, categories. This is by rows processed, by CPU, by buffer gets, by disk reads, elapsed time. This gives you the SQL IDs of various SQL statements. And you can go in here and look and see, hey, I'm experiencing problems. If you suddenly have, and this is normal operation, maybe in the future you you go through and check these, uh, your SQLs and notice that, hey, I've got a completely different setup here. So do we have major application changes? Or is there another problem with uh, statistics or something that's throwing us off? If you don't have recorded like information like this, you don't know. Uh, and then after the, the analysis section is complete, we always have a raw data capture. So the next, I don't know, 50, 40 pages, 35 pages of this report are all basically raw data that's fed in here. And for instance, here's all the different uh, non-default parameters of the instance, uh, You know, more detailed patching information about when the patch patches have happened in the past, uh, what your gather stats windows are in case there are changes, uh, the full history of the recent stats. So you can see, okay, it is running or not running. Uh, again, some of the information from the top is might be repeated down here if, uh, because this is raw data rather than uh, commented on. We don't necessarily comment on everything down here, but it's all here recorded. All the data file names, <coughs> and the different mount points and um, let's see, obviously this fills up 30 pages very quickly. These guys had a lot of data files. Um, also checking for excessive redo log switches. Uh, so if you're getting a lot of switching that could indicate either a lot of churn or maybe your data, your redo logs are incorrectly sized and might be resized. <coughs> Excuse me. Some information on the redo log sells the things and then some of the backup history. And this is where you check to see if your backups are matching what you expect they are. Uh, make sure that a uh, data file has last backup. So you check the dates here to see if anything here was off. Actually our process calls us out to the top if there's anything really off. And uh, no logging operations and back to the SQL at the end. So that's an example of our, uh, what our, one of our final reports looks like. <coughs> so for some other examples, let me, of where we get some of this data, I'm just gonna share my desktop in general.
Okay, so one of the things we can, or uh, one of the processes we run that I was mentioning earlier, something we call a mini check, which is uh, basically we have a DB check system. It's basically a bunch of can SQL. Uh, if I uh, type in list, it shows all the different SQL that we have can. This allows all of our team members to kind of run the same SQL statements, put this in all the systems so that we can easily um, get in here and, and kind of run the same statement, have something you can easily cut and paste from. Uh, so, you know, DB, DBAs will typically have their own set of scripts uh, that they run. Uh, and this just gives us a uniform way to do it. And, you know, folks can add their own scripts if they feel that they are appropriate. Uh, so a mini check is basically something we drop into a ticket. We check, you know, usually by uh, by monthly or something like that, that we'll go through here and, you know, says, hey, well, this is what the database is, database name, what host it was, time, things like that. Uh, it sort of does a pre-check on table spaces with usually uh, more, uh, I suppose, generous or more restrictive uh, sizes, just so that might have some pre-warning. Hey, this database is, uh, you know, maybe does an alarm till 96% or something. This kind of gives you a heads up. So you can go out here and fix this if you think that's appropriate to fix, um, which might save you from getting a ticket later on um, and such. Uh, checks the recycle bin for excessive stuff that may be removed. Maybe that needs to be cleaned up. Uh, checks for log switching that might be have happened <clears throat> recently that you're worried about. Uh, and we'll check other things that may not show up in reports. Uh, some of those things are, for instance, um, stale stats and valid objects. I mean, some of the same things that we check on our larger report, but this is sort of a, a mini version. Uh, objects with stale stat, or I already said stale stats, unusable indexes, maybe, uh, you know, for materialized views or something. Indexes often get marked unusable because they've been rebuilt or the objects have been moved. Um, that may or not, may not, depending on what alarming you're using, uh, may not, not trigger an alarm, but it's good to check that periodically just in case. And other job schedulers and failures. Uh, check that out. So one of the things we talked about running is sort of the next version is a stats pack report. Uh, stats pack you install, it basically comes on uh, all versions of oracles that I'm uh, aware of going back in time, even more currently. Uh, it sets up a job, takes an hourly snapshots, kind of just takes all the weight tables and copies it over to the proof stats schema, schema, if that's the Use the default schema and we'll give you a more detailed report. And you can go in here and uh, use this to uh, kind of generate your other report. You can take, if you're just doing this, if you don't have the whole JSON thing that we use, this, you know, you can save this report as part of a report package or include this in the Word doc or just cut and paste from this for what you see might be important. Uh, but it, out here it tells you how the system set up, memory on the system, uh, when the snap period occurred. Uh, how much time, dB time is the overall measurement of weights that a system has. Uh, so if your dB time is way higher than your lapse time, you kind of know that your database might be pretty busy. That's not necessarily a bad sign of, of overactivity. It just kind of depends on your system. So if you do these health checks, you can kind of get a sense of, hey, this is my dB time and this is the norm. And, you know, when is it out of the norm? Uh, it talks about the different load profiles of different operations. Um, let's see what else is in here. Your buffer hits, we used to be concerned about that, not quite as much anymore. Uh, and then there's these top five timed events that I showed you in the other report. So basically saying, hey, this is, uh, what is my database spending its time on? Uh, sometimes these are older. I think these particular ones might be a little bit older. Um, idle events, uh, you have to update stats pack with uh, the, they constantly added other idle events that Oracle is watching itself do. Um, focus on instant CPU, memory settings, various other stats. It's a very wordy uh, report. I uh, encourage you to Use Google if you want to try to read through these things. Uh, usually each of these things you can go and look up individually or 
kind of get a sense for them over time. Uh, AW1, AWR reports a little bit easier to read, mostly because they're HTML, but have a lot of the same content. Um, let's see, somewhere in here is, what else they say? So uh, the SQLs break down here. So it says, uh, this isn't quite the same report I used to pull out the SQL just because the other one's a little more compressed. Uh, but you can certainly use this where it goes through. It has the hash values of SQLs. Hey, what is your what has your database been doing? Here's the top SQL for executions, order by gets, order all by these different things. Uh, you know what's going on so that you can save these for your reports. Let's see. Somewhere in here is the um, cache advice, and that's what I was going to show you. I can show you in the other report too. Uh, different IO stats. This gives you IO performance for all the different table spaces. If you've got hot objects that are, uh, you know, that are hitting a particular table space, you might want to move those to other table spaces. It just, you know, just kind of depends on your world. Uh, I think generally with uh, Oracle, every answer is it depends and uh, you go through the details. Maybe that's all answers. Um, here's the buffer pool advisory that I was talking about before. Basically this 1.0 setting is your current setting. So in this case, it's 480 megs. And, uh, you know, this isn't, this is an example database I have in a virtual box. So it's not, uh, not going to, uh, but even here, it kind of says, well, if you doubled your memory to 960, uh, then you would have uh, many more thousands of buffers. Your physical reads might go from one uh, from uh, the fa factor of one to a factor of 0.3, so a third, and you know your reads would drop down, which you know could probably improve your performance. But uh, with all these settings. Uh, maybe it won't. It kind of depends on the nature of your application, your SQL, uh, other activity. Sometimes increasing memory or changing parameters will make things faster. Sometimes if they get too big, sometimes Oracle has uh, a little bit of trouble trying to balance things out if there's uh, too big a size here. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I want to say about this AWR report. Uh, to run one of these reports, um, uh, I can show you that really quick. Uh, you log in as the perfstat user, and you refer to your Oracle home with that uh, question mark. Um, it's in RDBS admin, and it's just SP report if you can spell report. Brings up all the recent snapshots. Uh, you'll see gaps in these areas. Uh, these gaps uh, indicate when the system was bounced and you would select the beginning snapshot period, the ending snapshot period, and it would spit out the report right there. And it also drops it to a file so you can download it and check it later. And it has all the basic same contents that I went through right there. Um, let's see. So the next thing to look at is an AWR report. AWR reports uh, are can be run either through OEM if you have access to that, or they can be run by script. Um, let's see if you want to run it by script. Um, I have a shortcut script here that basically is uh, running same thing. RDMS admin, AW report. It looks very similar. Um, where you can say what report type you want. And you ask like uh, number of days, which is, you know, how many days back you want to see it. And then you could click on the snap IDs, which uh, this only has one because it was down recently. Uh, but if I chose prior days, you'd see a similar um, list to how you just saw for the snaps packs to see all the different snapshots. Uh, anyway, so same sort of thing as we saw in the perfstat report. You've got your basic database information at the top, <clears throat> and then your top findings from ADDM. 
This is the diagnostic uh, diagnosis manager. I can't remember what these uh, things always mean, which basically points out this is Oracle's automated uh, health check sort of process that goes through and sees, you know, where it would offer to improve things. And uh, it always usually always finds some sort of problem. Um, you can run an ADNA report. Uh, just like you run a AWR report. Maybe we'll look at one of those if we have time. Uh, and it basically talks about, you know, what SQL you could look at. These are useful to look at over a particular problem time period. It will offer, say, hey, you had a problem with IO performance. It was markedly wrong or whatever. Uh, anyway, sort of the same thing. So it goes through and talks about uh, uh, efficiency percentages of, you know, how often you're, you know, if it's, in memory sort, in memory sorts is 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 uh, sorting in memory rather than sorting in your temp table space when you're doing a large query, or perhaps an index rebuild, something like that. Um, and it goes top uh, ground or top foreground events by wait time. We'll go through and break out all the different things that's going on. Uh, this does a little bit better with those idle events. So you can go through and say, hey, my top weight is CPU. So that's usually Kind of like the report I just saw, commenting that if most of your weights are CPU, that's probably pretty good. Um, and it breaks out all the different wait times. You'd save this report, or at least snatches of this report that you are cut and paste tables from this report into your document if you've got it available uh, to kind of give you that snapshot that we've talked about a bunch of times. Uh, down here, uh, it's nice, it's all HTML enabled. You can go and click on your SQL statistics and see all these ordered by the elapsed time, CPU time. You can then click further on the SQL statement itself and it will bring up what the statement was uh, from before, hit back to go back. It orders them by a lot of different things that you might not see. And um, it also captures the init or parameters. This is something you just cut and paste from here and drop into your other report. Um, but again, the, the value of that written report is that you are going in and actually adding analysis to it. I mean, you could just capture AWR reports, but after a while those become, you know, wrote where you're just, you know, capturing them out there and you're not necessarily reviewing them like you should. Um, and actually here is the ADM task report itself. I forgot these were in here. So this is uh, from the same snapshot period. It will go in here and basically it, it drops down at the bottom of the AW report for you, which is nice. And goes through in here and tells you what Oracle's internal logic thinks is the uh, finding and recommendations. I wouldn't necessarily include these in a health check by themselves. Oracle will usually always find a problem with, uh, not necessarily a problem, but figure out whatever the top SQL thing is appropriate. Um, let's see, we'll be done in about five minutes. All right, so the last um, last thing we're gonna talk about is Oracle's DB check. Now this is part of the, or currently part of the TFA utility. Um, it is um, installed, if you, usually you can install it as Oracle, but it's usually best to install at root, gives you more access to this thing. And then you can run the uh, DB check, which I'll, I'll, it's probably gonna take longer to run than we have time for. Um, oops, not DB check, um, or check, uh, which goes out there and analyzes your database. Uh, if we're gonna have time for it to come back, this is a very small system. So it tends to be a little slower on this system. We'll come back to it. Anyway, at the end, it, ge it, it generates, um, you basically go through and choose how you wanna run it and it generates a zip file you can download on your desktop or send to Oracle if there's an issue or something. And it gives you a nice uh, index page you can go in and click on. And this brings you to um, this health check report. So this is uh, even nicer than the AWR reports because it's even further web enabled. Uh, goes through here and tells you same sort of information, where it ran, things like that. Uh, it's uh, got these nice things. You can click, hey, I want to see the critical alerts. I want to see failures. I want to see warnings. 
and it will basically uh, do a great job kind of filling out these pieces. Um, and then you're saying, hey, this should use automatic space management and view will go through and explain what's going on, uh, why it thinks you should use it and give you some, usually gives you some other links to follow up on if you're curious. Um, and you can go through it each little thing. Hey, it, it actually calls out each of the Oracle patches that might not be installed in this instance and say, uh, and, and will give you details about why uh, this particular patch is recommended by Oracle. And you can see um, basically what's going on, gives you an Oracle note to also follow up on if you're interested. Uh, it recommends watching OS or launching OS Watcher, which is Oracle's tool to sort of monof uh, monitor the uh, OS and file system and the CPU disk performance gives you some fairly nice graphs or at least some graphs uh, that might help explain a OS problem. Um, depending on what your, if your Linux team or your Windows team is um, doing their own monitoring that might be helpful or not, just kind of depends. Uh, it also checks, uh, one really great thing about DB check is, or I'm sorry, or check is it also checks the OS system for OS patches or for OS settings that could be correct. So for instance, uh, some things that might always recommend. So you wanna, again, all this should be done through analysis. So you're putting this into a report. You're, you don't wanna just cut and paste these things because sometimes it's appropriate and sometimes it's not. Uh, Oracle clusterware is not being used. I mean, that's okay. That's all right. It's not a rack system. It's a virtual box. So it's not, um, not surprising that something wouldn't be set like that. Um, and then it goes through and basically provides sort of the same detail you see in other reports. Um, I think that's it for this. Uh, I think I'll stop that share and go back to the presentation real quick. Um, okay, so we've been through our examples. Hopefully you can see this screen again. And um, again, final thoughts. Uh, health checks are an important component of proactive organization. Uh, if you find it difficult for you guys, for you to do these in within house TBAs, uh, you can use an outsourcer or like I say, these tools will also help you. Um, it's just a um, really helpful process that you will find yourself referring to in the future. So some of the connection information I mentioned I was gonna go through early, uh, later. Um, you can tweet or use Facebook, connect to the New York Oracle Users Group in all these different ways. Um, there's the Oracle User Community website right there. So you can follow that link and it will take, take you to there. Um, I think that's what I had. Great, thank you, Zane. Make sure everyone fills out the cloud adoption survey. Link is in the chat for you. Make sure you get those in today so that we can uh, select a winner uh, in the next day or so. Uh, let's open it up for Q&A here. Um, as a reminder, the Q&A panel is down at the bottom of your screen. So go ahead and submit your questions that way. Zane, it does look like there's one there if you wanna take a look at it. Uh, yep, uh, that was uh, dispatch pack require a Oracle license and is no, it is included every time. So uh, it does, it is not installed um, automatically. You do have to go create a perfstat table space. Uh, you run the uh, SP create to create that account or create that process and SP snap. Uh, just look on, you know, basically Google search for stats pack and how to install it will be. Uh, pretty obvious. The, uh, uh, additionally, the uh, um, stat, uh, staff spec doesn't come with a cleanup feature. So you wanna make sure that 
uh, you include a job that also cleans up old snapshots. Otherwise, it can slowly take over your, your storage. I can't see the link in the chat. I'm re-adding it for you now. Give me just a minute. Thanks for bringing that attention. Bring it to my attention. Oh, Zoom is slow today. Maybe it's me. Okay, let me know if you can see that. That should be in the chat screen. It's a techvalidate.com slash registration. All right, he's got it. Go ahead and fill that out. Let's see, are there any more questions? Maybe just give it another minute. Then everybody can get a hold of their link too. It's a quiet group today. We were hoping for hard questions. All Zane was. No. No? <laughs> yep, thanks everybody for attending. And uh, we do have other uh, events coming up, including uh, Oracle OEM options and in memory, I believe. Yes, sure absolutely. We've got another one with NYUG May 11th is our next one, or no, we have two more. We have another one for Oracle to AWS. Oh, so check out, yes, check out dataveal.com. Um, like I said, fill out your cloud survey um, and we'll send out this recording as soon as it's available. Thank you to NYOUG for sponsoring this. Thanks everybody, have a great day. Bye. Thanks, bye.